Hello, I'm Tara Crank from Dryad Bushcraft. I'm here today with Koi Tleil, part of the Smallwoods Association, to share with you my very own special recipe for Hawthorne guacamole. I developed this recipe because I think that the raw form of Hawthorne has a similar taste to avocados, but without the ethically questionable production. I'm really fond of this recipe because it has the benefits of raw hawthorn while also showcasing its unique flavour and it also is free of added sugar unlike a lot of autumn recipes. First of all I'm going to take you on a walk and show you how to identify and find hawthorn. Then we're going to look at the medicinal benefits and the value to wildlife. Finally I will show you how to make the guacamole and then how to eat it as well. Let's go. Bring something to put your hawthorn berries in. They're also known as haws. And we're gonna look for them in woodlands, open ground, scrubland, and hedgerows. They prefer really any soil that's not excessively wet, like fens or bogs. Here we are in a uh, a kind of open woodland you're going to get the best fruits from slightly sunnier areas of the woodland so the edges and clearings as you can see i've got lots of fruits here the hawthorn berries are a waxy shiny red they're quite deep in color and when they're ripe they're soft so you can squash them and you see this greenish paste comes out they have a seed inside, which it's important that you don't eat that. So what you can do is put it in your mouth, take out the seed and enjoy the flesh. When you're foraging, make sure that you don't eat anything unless you're absolutely certain of the identification. I'm gonna go through some tips now. Part of the identification process is finding it, knowing where it lives. We've already done that. so. Uh, have a look at the berries up close. They grow in clusters. They're this deep red and on the end of them they have a little star shape. The leaves are uniquely very very deeply lobed. You can see they've got these cuts into them that go almost to the middle. If you look at the whole tree, they can grow with a single stem and they can grow in dense clusters. Often in hedgerows, uh, you'll find them very, very dense and that's great for nesting birds. The bark of hawthorn is deeply textured, often quite gnarled and it's got a greyish tinge to its brown colour. When picking your berries, take them off in clusters and give them a quick check for any holes that might indicate that an insect in there. We want them to be in good condition, particularly because we're gonna be using them raw. So ensure that you're picking them away from any busy roads where there's gonna be pollution or farmer's fields that are sprayed with pesticides. Haws are ripe in the autumn and they will be ripe until about November. Just watch out for the spines as you're picking them because they're quite sharp. Make sure to take maximum one fifth of what's there so that there's plenty for the plant to recover, for other foragers and particularly for wildlife because hawthorn can support up to 300 species of wildlife. Medicinally, hawthorn is great for the cardiovascular system and for the digestive system. It has been proven as a treatment for uh, cardiovascular diseases because it's very good for the heart. It improves the blood supply to the, to the cardiac tissues and can make your heart beat stronger beats but also slow it down because they're more efficient. It dilates blood vessels so it has been used in lowering blood pressure and it also balances blood fat levels by reducing levels of low density lipoprotein, which is the bad fats, and increasing high density lipoprotein, which are the good fats. The fibre that Hawthorne contains is a prebiotic, so it works really well with your gut bacteria. Hawthorne is rich in polyphenols, which are strong antioxidant compounds. A 
I've got plenty of haws now, let's go and prepare them. Now I'm going to show you the equipment and the ingredients that you'll need. First of all, get an idea of how many haws you've got by using a measuring jug. This recipe goes for about five to six hundred millilitres of haws. You're going to need some water to wash them, some salt and pepper, a chopping board and a knife, a dish to serve or a container to store the final product in, a spoon, a sieve and a bowl that the sieve fits into, a mixing bowl with a stirrer, one lime, a large tomato, a small red onion, a chilli and a handful of coriander. Wash and drain your berries. This is the part that takes a little bit of patience. We're going to sort through the berries, de-stone them and get rid of any stalks, check the quality, make sure that there's no little creatures inside. So make sure you are somewhere nice, maybe with the sounds of nature around, or if you can't do that, make sure you've got some music or some good company. What I'm going to do to prepare each berry is squeeze it and you'll see the flesh slides off the stone. We're just going to wipe around it, make sure we get as much as we can and then discard the stone. You might notice that the flesh starts off a nice yellowy pale green but as you leave it out in the bowl it will go a darker brownish colour. That's just it oxidising, just like when you leave bananas out, they go brown. By using this fingers method, you get a lot of product from the flesh of the berry and you also get the skin. If you prefer a smoother texture, you can use a spoon, put the berries in a sieve and just crush them. I have a couple of essential tips for you while you do this. First of all, use the edge of your spoon to regularly run under the bottom of the sieve, clearing the product and wiping it into your bowl. Second, if you're finding your progress is slowing, add a little bit of water to the sieve mixture and that will just help the flesh run through the holes in the sieve a little bit more easily. You'll know you're done when you're just left with stalks and stones in your sieve. I've processed all my berries now. You can see I'm left with a thick chocolate sort of paste. It looks a bit like chocolate mousse. And towards the end, I've been dribbling bits of water through the sieve too, just to maximize my output. It's a little bit more liquidy than much of the rest of it, but that's okay because as I mentioned before, hawthorn has pectin in it, so you will find that if you leave this for any amount of time, it'll go a bit of a jelly-like consistency, it'll be quite thick. We're gonna move on to the actual making of the guacamole, so I'll get all my ingredients out and um, show you how to prepare it. Stir up your hawthorn pulp and you can use a fork if you need some help getting it to a consistent consistency. Add all of your ingredients apart from the lime and stir thoroughly. Juice the lime and stir it in and finish off with a dash of salt and pepper to taste. It's 
stir everything together and then it'll be ready to serve. Enjoy your Hawthorne guacamole. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Koi Tlail channel where you can find more content like this. My name's Tara Crank and I'll see you next time. <laughs> it's amazing with the fresh coriander as well. I'm laughing in. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 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 Very tasty. Really good. I'm glad you like it. I mean, difficult not to.